All right, YouTube, it is Mr. Mean coming at you this Friday afternoon. I have the most amazing David Somerville, who is writing an awesome setting for Atlas Games. Uh, David, why don't you introduce yourself and introduce the game? Yeah, hi, I'm David Somerville. I am the author of Plain Gia, which is a Stone Age setting for 5th edition. It's on Kickstarter right now, and it's being published by Atlas Games. Um, it's Stone Age fantasy. You're you're fighting dinosaurs in the Stone Age, and you've got magic, and uh, it's sort of like all of those. For, you know that you know how every fantasy book starts with long ago when the dragons and giants wrestled before the days of the gods. That's this setting, so you can just you are the days there. of the gods and the exactly. dinosaurs. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So exactly. the uh, and you've got a primer up on the Kickstarter page. Um, yep. So we'll make sure, sure we do. put a we'll put a link down in the doobly doo, uh, as Matt Coville likes to say. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, we like to steal things from him. Uh, yeah. So how long has this setting been in the works? It's been in the works for a couple of years. Uh, I took a big RV trip across uh, the states with my family, and while I was getting the rig ready, I was listening to Keith Baker's Manifest Zone. Um, this was back, I don't know, like two or three years ago. Um, and it really lit up my brain and got me thinking about how I would create a setting. And so I sort of like was thinking about this while I was driving across America and then, uh, you know, locking in the pieces to write it down. But it's been uh, sort of like publicly in the works for just a little over a year now. Last, I guess a year and a half. Last May, I published it to uh, the interwebs and then... Uh, People liked it, got excited about it. We've been talking about it and developing it for about a year, and uh, and now it's on Kickstarter. It is, and it is live, and it's actually live on Kickstarter right now. You can back. Yeah, it. that's right. And yep. we're looking at one book or two books. Uh, just one book. It's called The Star Shaman's Song of Plangia, and it's a setting guide. Uh, and the first third is player focused material, so new. Uh, Classes, kinships, races, backgrounds, equipment, new spells, new everything. Um, and then the back two half is the back two half. <laughs> That's not a thing people say. The, the latter two thirds uh, is all DM focused stuff. So it's uh, DM guidance, how to run a game there, um, a big section on factions and threats, setting up a ton of. Um, kinds of npcs kinds of monsters for you to run into in the world there's new magic items um and then just you know a whole bestiary because of course there is because you have to it's dinosaurs you have to <laughs> it's it, by <laughs> right. law it says um it does. so um and what made you go to atlas atlas games yeah uh, do you know That's robin laws or um no, I know Patrick Leader. So okay. um, I started out in game design over on the uh, board game side, um, and I created a board game called Vast the Crystal Caverns, um, which is like a dungeon crawling kind of game. Uh, and Patrick Leader is my publisher for that. Publisher slash co-designer slash the person who made the game actually work. I basically came to him with a harebrained idea, and then he made it into a marketable game. So kudos to him on that. Um, but we've stayed in touch over the years, and I uh, really thought I had something with Plain Gia. And originally it was just like, hey, do you know anyone who can handle the logistics side of the Kickstarter? Because I can do everything else, but I don't want to be shipping books. Uh, and he said, yeah, you should talk to Atlas Games. Um, so I called them uh, and had a great conversation with John Nephew. He said, yeah, send me over the book. Let me take a look at it. Uh, and then it was all quiet for a little while and then got a very flattering email, which is basically like, we'll help you with logistics, but we'd really like to just publish this and throw our resources behind it. So they've been big fans of the setting, big fans of the work. It's been really exciting to collaborate with um, Justin Alexander, who runs RPGs for them. It was just, um, you know... Uh, amazing a win-win so it's, it's been a really great experience yeah exactly i've just like <clears throat> you know unpaid intern slips under internship slash publication has been great yeah and so is so is this your first rpg that you've designed officially no i actually published personally a little rpg i think i have it here actually uh this little guy never tell me the odds i have heard of it yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. I didn't know anybody had heard of it. That's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. So I made that 
And that was just self-publishing. That's drive through RPG print on demand. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is at a different scale. Well, um, yeah, yeah. But that was fun. <laughs> you got <laughs> Atlas behind you. That's a you know yeah. Feng Shui and you know uh, right, exactly. what is it? Um, what's the other? Ars Magica. Uh, and, yeah, Magical yeah. Kitty saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, you you got some some clout there. Um, yeah, for sure. And I believe I haven't checked the page in in a day or two, but I have you guys you've reached funding, yes. Are you yeah, real close or did you reach... in half an hour? Right. Uh, okay. So yeah. You're... Now... So the book is happening. So anybody who might have doubt, uh, you can rest yeah. assured that this, this is not vaporware. It's reached its no. funding gold. It's going to be a physical book. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I'm just trying to do the math here, which is not my strong suit. <laughs> Words. Words are your strong suit. <laughs> We're about like nine times our funding goal right now. Nice. So everything's going great and just come and join the party. If you so, want to. so the, so those that might be on the fence, what aside from the obvious, which is a oh, holy shit, really cool dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, one of the things that caught my eye and I want you to elaborate on it is um, yeah. you can have dinosaur player characters. Yeah, totally. Uh, so we have a, a spread of dinosaur characters um you can play as the uh sharp fangs which are like your t-rex velociraptor type leather wings which is your pteranodons um uh of course i'm not gonna forget it. hammer tails which are your ankylosaurs your armored tanks and then uh web feet which is like your hadrosaur parasaurolophus kind of um descendants and the idea in the setting is that Saurians as a kinship, they have commonalities, but each of these groups kind of operates and looks at the world in slightly different ways or has different survival strategies. Um, and I think mechanics are really lean into what you might kind of love about that uh that subtype so you know for pterosaurs you're flying but we did some cool things where it's not just like and you have a fly speed it's like you have a fly speed but you have to use both arms to fly because they're kind of like more awkward flyers and you can pick stuff up with your feet and uh carry so we're trying to like evoke the actual um creature a lot and you yeah. know saurians can like le or the sharp things can leap twice as far have natural weapons so yeah there's lots of stuff in there um but the all the races, sorry, all the kinships. I'm still retraining myself on that one. Um, have um, have a lot of story hooks built in, and not just mechanical hooks. So the Saurian kinship has this really intimate relationship with death and undeath, and they are in communication with their ancestors sort of at all times. So you have this feature that at the start lets you sort of detect friendly undead nearby, if there are any. And then that becomes, you can kind of get a little bit of guidance from them. And then it becomes, as you level up, that you can actually um, sort of get an idea of what might be a good path to take, just using really simple existing spells or like minor mechanics. Um, very much in line with sort of uh, 5e's existing sort of power structure, um, but a neat way to sort of be existing in the world and not just I'm a dinosaur, but I'm a I'm a ghost whispering dinosaur is uh, one more level of fun. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So in um, the art, um, just from what I saw from the flyer or the yeah. preview download, it looks amazing. And I know on your Thank Discord, you. uh, we'll make sure we get it, uh, make sure you can give me a, a unlimited link for your Discord yeah. so that we can put that in the show notes because uh, th uh, there's one of your hashtags on your Discord, which is art. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And some of the stuff that you've been throwing up there is just downright amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, so if you're, if you're you. an art freak like I am, for you know character art and design theory and you know and just cool art period a coffee table book it's got it, it at least so yeah. far the the preview does i'm assuming yeah. that art's going to flow through the book uh oh yeah absolutely i think can you say some you know, of the artists or the, people that, that are doing the art definitely i would love to the goal from the start was i wanted this to be as much like an official printed publication as possible and to me fifth edition one of the standout uh, elements is great art direction so um as much as possible i just like looked at artists that have actually been in printed 5e materials I'm like great i'm calling them first so um <laughs> our cover is by anna putted warna who is just an amazing artist She's done a lot of work for uh, Gwent Card Game, uh, The Witcher, some of her stuff is in Cyberpunk 2022. She's just absolutely amazing, completely blew away um, uh, the work that we asked her to do. 
Um, Corey Trago Erdner is uh, a really, really awesome illustrator whose work is in the Monster Manual and other materials who put together some of our creature design. Um, we've got work from Magic the Gathering artists like Tomas Jedrasek, um, uh, other ones that I'm blanking on right now. That's and I fine. Apologize the, for that. the point is, you have awesome yeah. art in the book. Really great art. And it's going to yeah, be throughout really the book. Art. So, so your, yep. your, the book, the, the theme, or I should say the tone, the artistic tone is trying to follow in the steps of like the Monster Manual, the Player's Guide, and the DMG. You're trying to have that yeah, visual exactly. effect that Watsy has created over the years. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of shows. To... It really does, at least from the preview. Um, it, uh, I mean, just, you know, just really neat uh, just Thank to you. be, uh, yeah. you know, contacted out of the blue, you know, by a, a fellow lover of your product. And he's like, dude, I don't know if this is OK, dude, but, you know, you, you have a YouTube channel and you talk about all of this weird shit all the time. And, you know, <laughs> these guys are starting out and, you know, if could you could you give them a shout out or whatever? And I'm like, totally. That's what the channel's yeah. about. You know, it's what. The the name is uh you know uh misleading Mr. Mean speaks but the the point <laughs> of it is to is to bring uh, awareness to some of the games that aren't necessarily Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder yeah. you know the big boys on the block they're you know Mothership mm -hmm. and you know right you know Fantasy Age and and you know Stranger Games yeah. you know uh, yeah I love uh, that yeah and so this falls in that even though it's going to use the 5e mechanics it's a setting that hasn't been explored yet and you're right. you're adding a whole bunch of other mechanics that aren't currently in D&D &D, um, or yeah. they're being manipulated to fit your theme which i think is amazing because that that's an amount of creativity that takes a lot of work um awesome Thank yeah you. so uh yeah how, are, and are you the principal us... writer oh, sorry. i'm sorry yeah so i created the setting and i um i definitely had help like to be clear justin alexander was amazing i have a story team of developers and writers who consulted throughout um really especially like i said before i'm not a numbers guy so on the mechanics balancing like i really needed help with that um but yeah i mean this is i i there isn't a page on this in this book that i haven't sort of written all or most of so this is your baby this is my baby it's yeah. like this is yeah. this is like your your newborn you and you're very yeah, you're a very exactly. proud daddy you're 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 glowing mm. right now as the <laughs> you know as we say um yeah and when when do we when's the because of course with the 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 pandemic that shall not be named mm -hmm. and, and global shipping mm -hmm. issues that we're having and paper yeah. shortages. Um, do you feel that the book is on time for, for, to get into people's hands? Yeah. And, and when delayed. is that? <clears throat> yeah, sure. It's June is the printed books um, goal. Of 2022. Uh, the PDF will be out before then. Yeah. I, I keep pushing that list to be like, the sooner we can get that PDF in people's hands, the better, because I just want everybody to be able to start playing these games. Um, and I actually don't know what official date they've committed to for the PDF, but soon, as soon as possible after backing uh, or after funding. Right. Um, yeah, you know, Atlas is a really mature company. It's been around for a really long time and uh, they've just seen so much and understand really how these logistics work. And they made totally the right call to delay the launch of the Kickstarter for a month when the shipping situation erupted or- You can say fiasco. More visible. Yeah, the fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> when the world blew up, yeah. they moved the Kickstarter, which probably was the right call. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it turned out to be good for us because we had another month to sort of um, secure even more art, do some final polishing, some final planning. And um, yeah, it paid off. It's been good. Well, I know uh, I, I'll be getting my copy because I'm a backer and uh, I'll obviously Thank you. Re I'll review it, you know, when the time comes when I, I don't like to review things until I have a physical copy, whether it be a PDF that I print or the physical yeah. book comes in. Uh, I'm old and grumpy and P <laughs> PDFs. And no. I, I look at screens all day, <laughs> you know, so. And then I do this in my yeah. hobby time. So obviously I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sadomasochist of some kind. <laughs> um, but I, uh, totally I yeah, I, I love the idea of, you know, here's a guy who took a family trip, you know, across the U S and went, you know what we need? We need a game about dinosaurs, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and yeah, dinosaur player right. characters. And, and that, you know, it just, that, that just speaks volumes to, you know, just the creativity and, 
you know, the fun, it sounds like it's just going to be fun, you know, and, and yeah, I don't mean like in a campy man. way. I mean, you're no. going to be able to tell some gripping stories and, you know, I mean, I can see like, you know, the cataclysm coming, you know, like maybe mm -hmm. when the Saurians died out and, you know, the humans and the mm -hmm. elves and the dwarves took over, you know, you got so I many options. Setting, yeah, I love to call the setting pre-apocalyptic because the whole point of like that time is like it's before other stuff happened. Um, and uh, there's this feeling of like, we know it didn't stay this way. So like, what is our campaign going to lead to that's going to cause the yeah. end of all of this and the beginning of everything else? So there's your next uh, uh, Kickstarter is you can, uh, you know, <laughs> the end go. time, you know, or the, totally. great, the great kaboom, the big mushroom yeah. in the sky, whatever. Uh, no, it's yeah, it's exactly. awesome. And it's it's such, I mean, you know, we have we have sci-fi settings and we have mm -hmm. noir settings, but I don't think I've seen a dinosaur setting yeah. for, for anything well, I think was... 5e related. I mean, totally. we've had I games really, like uh, what? Yeah. Oh, what was the one that had dinosaurs and it used the ubiquity system? I can't remember oh, the name. Love, loving, right now. loving dinosaurs or loving guns or. There definitely have been. There's number, been a couple like, out yeah. there. <laughs> you know, dinosaurs sprinkled through for sure. Yeah, and there's yeah. a powered by the apocalypse one. It didn't. It didn't mm -hmm. gather much steam, but it was. It was a neat yeah. idea. Um, there's you know. one out there called Stone and Sorcery, which I'm yeah. so jealous of that name. Right, because um, Worm is there. Worm. Um, yeah. Uh, there's some really good ones, but I think what we really wanted to do, what I wanted to do, and Atlas supported was. Um, I think a lot of those other settings do prehistory by taking stuff out. It's like, all right, we're going to do the Stone Age, so not this, not this, not this, not this. Okay, you're, you can play these races, these classes, and this place. And I want to take the Keith Baker Everon approach, which is everything that is in 5e is in this setting. It just looks different than what you'd expect. Yeah. So every monster type, every... Uh, every class, every kinship, they're all there. They just look different, right? Clerics are now shamans. Right. Um, warlocks are now like ambassadors for their clan to this ununderstandable power. You have, um, you know, dragonborn who just sort of emerged from the jungle and are still mostly dragon in their sort of like hearts and minds. Um, yeah, you have elves who are half dream. They're coming from the land of dreams and dwarves who are half stone. They've just carved themselves out of the rock. So like everything is there. It's just primal and cooler, I think, because of it. Are we going to have Neanderthals or cavemen? Are they going to be the bad guys? Yeah, I think they could be in your setting. And I think the thing is 5e already supports that, right? You can yeah. grab your... Yeah, uh, you know, your troglodytes or whoever and just yeah. like throw them in and you've already got them there. You got them, you're set. Yeah, that's yeah. uh and then, you know, to add, you know, whatever else you want, you know, because you're using the 5e rule system, now you're open to all the other settings that yeah. are out there. So, as exactly. Genesis, you know, you could have spaceships coming yeah. down. So you can have, you know, exactly. spaceships and and dinosaurs. What more could you ask for, you know? Flash Literally Gordon. nothing. That's the whole that's, thing. That's, you know, we, we can call this done. We're, we can just quit. Yeah. Now. We're done. We're happy. Uh, no, that Damn. it's it's really neat. So now we've talked about the book. We've talked about the art. We've talked about when it's coming out. We got all that. We got all the important stuff. Now let's do the fun stuff. You're let's on an airplane. It. You're going to crash yeah. on an island. You're sure. going to be the only sole survivor. You can bring one RPG with you. One. Mm. No supplements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One RPG that you're going to read till the day you die on that island. What book is it? Okay, this is a great question. It, uh, I here's the thing. It's it's vanilla, but I'm going to say it. It's fifth edition, and the reason is it's. I heard someone say this recently, and I thought it was a really great insight. I don't think fifth edition is a game. I think it's an engine, and I think as we can see with Stone Age Fantasy, you can run whatever you want with it. And while I love and have created more opinionated RPGs that have more of a, a narrower focus, I think if I'm alone on that, uh, well, hang on. If I'm alone, I might want Thousand Year Vampire. Now I'm arguing <laughs> with myself. I need a solo RPG, right? Uh, Iron Sworn. Okay, Iron Sworn's my answer. Iron Sworn, excellent. Yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, if I'm solo, I can need a solo RPG. Yeah, well, you could technically play D and D solo. <laughs> um, okay, sure, so then the next question is, if you could get one person famous out of history, doesn't matter. It can be an actor, mm -hmm. an artist, mm -hmm. uh, a politician. If one person from past or present, 
to sit down and play an RPG with, who would it be? Oh, man. Oh, Andy Warhol. That's a great. I would be so curious to see. Wouldn't what it? Would wouldn't he just? Brain. It would be, and I want behind him. I want the the collage of all the different colors yeah. with his face on it. Yeah, because I just think exactly, that would be right? that would be perfect, right? I feel like he would get really excited about chromatic dragons. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and then the next one is, and this is one I ask all all the interviewees: What game system or game design? that you love that you didn't have any hand in and you wish you would have mm -hmm. made it or uh, created dread. it dread probably nice. i dreads and like that's one um jenga hardcore <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just i think that dread like that sort of like lateral thinking of like we're going to do this thing we're going to do it a completely different way that's going to utterly evoke what we're going for i think is Super innovative brilliant. yeah yeah that was exactly. definitely and you know you've already got everybody everybody has an imagination you know even right. if they say they don't they do yeah um which is amazing because if you didn't you'd be dead because it's yeah. literally <laughs> part of right. the thinking brain and how your brain works um that's right and my wife is a scientist she's a molecular biologist she says oh, i have awesome. no imagination but watching <laughs> her play jenga is you know like art you know and so like i love to give her the difficult questions and then you know mm -hmm. you know how how hard is it i don't know pull a piece out and find <laughs> out you know so and uh, needless to say i always lose um yeah so uh and then uh if you could uh if you could be in any era any time and bring mm -hmm. any pastime and you could bring role-playing games to that time, what time would it be? What era? Uh, not Puritan New England. He's <laughs> uh, <laughs> <So>, a witch! Uh, <laughs> I mean, it gotta be the Renaissance, right? They're like, their brains are blowing up anyway. Then, yeah. And D&D &D is already, they say it's medieval, but it's actually Renaissance. So like, that's already perfect. They're primed for it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, unfortunately, I've got a work call, so we're going to have to wrap all this good. up. But, uh, man, that's some neat information. I am so happy for you. I'm so excited that the Kickstarter awesome. is going gangbusters. And uh, here at Mr. Mean, uh, we will definitely try to support you as best we can. I think thank it's Thank you a, so much. Thanks uh, for this time. I've had oh, a great man, time. Oh, it's, man. Really thank you. you. It's, uh, it's an awesome community that you got going over there. Um, we'll make sure we put the links down in the doobly-doo for your Discord because uh, I Perfect. said it's a pretty happening Discord. I've been hanging out over there a little <laughs> okay. bit. Uh, for me, yeah, the art fun. section is is the spot to be, and seeing all the art populated is you know people throwing up stuff, and it's it's going to be a beautiful book when it comes out, and I can't yeah. wait. So um, for me and all the mini armies, Dave, thank you so much for making this product. It's what the world needed in this time, and I hope it brings you and your family much success. Uh, is there anything you want to say to everybody out there uh, before we wrap up? Buy the damn yes, book! <laughs> <laughs> Buy the book, but mostly thank you. Thanks for doing what you're doing. We're all getting through this together. Appreciate you and uh, your, all, all the viewers here. Awesome, David. Thank you so much. Um, to everybody on YouTube out there, as always, like and subscribe. Go hit up their Discord. Pangea, full title of the book again? The Star Shaman Song of Plangea. Yeah, say that five times fast. You won't forget <laughs> it. You won't forget. And the cover is absolutely gorgeous. There is a primer on the Kickstarter. Uh, uh, there's a primer on the Kickstarter page that you can download. Uh, it's uh, looking amazing. It's already reached its funding. So this will be a book. We just have to wait a little bit with all this craziness that's going on in the world. But if you if you give it that time, you let these guys create and make the magic that they do. They're backed by Atlas Games. It's it's going to be fantastic. And you're going to have something that's truly, I think, going to be a, a, a coffee table worthy book, as well as a game that you can play with your friends and your family. And I think, I, I dare say this, I think it'll be somewhat of an educational game too, because kids love dinosaurs. And so this is a great sure. way to bring kids into role playing. So, and it's not hard. Uh, so uh, with that, I will say thank you. And as always, like and subscribe, support me on Patreon, head over to the Discord. There'll be links down in doobly-doo. David, brother, thank you so much for your time. Keep doing what you do. And we'll chat again when the Kickstarter's over, okay? Sounds perfect. All thank right, you. man. Take Have care. a wonderful day.